appreciate you guys sticking in with us. This is your boy Frank Native from the Dope Vision Experience Podcast. I got the 2020 wrap up coming for you guys. I got my boy Wallace from the Bay. Exactly, you know, exactly. what I'm saying he here with me. We kind of going through it. We listed our top five, you know, hottest artists artists of the, of the year with, with the top five albums. You know, now we coming back to you. We coming for a little bit something, a little bit different. We dropping what's called the Pandemic Award, the, the Pandemic Hustle Award. We kind of these gonna you know, highlight the people who actually been out here, who been grinding throughout the pandemic, and we kind of been seeing. You know what I'm saying? The opportunity for them to continue to grow and keep their foot on the on the industry net. You know what I'm saying? I kick it off and let you I go first this time. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna drop the first one. I go I'm gonna say I know this might not might not be the best one that everybody kinda feeling right now, but you know what I'm saying? I had to give it to him, you know, Tory Lanez with the quarantine radio. You know what I'm saying? When the when the, when the pandemic hit, you know what I'm saying, everybody kinda locked in the career. We didn't know what we was gonna do. And then all of a sudden, you know, Tory came through with that, you know, on the gram, he was pushing that quarantine radio and it was going crazy. You know what I'm saying? It was going crazy. I forgot you know? about that. I forgot about Quarantine that. Quarantine radio, man. And then the thing about it, why I kind of gave him that, give him that, um, I gave him that pandemic hustle award is he flipped that. You know what I'm saying? He took that, you know, from the gram. Mm -hmm. They locked him down. They, they shut him. Instagram shut him down. Yeah. He got it back up and going. And then he flipped it into a YouTube, a live stream YouTube. And so he went on YouTube and he did the live stream and had people donating. Yeah. And so that was a way for him to kind of, you know what I'm saying, make money and create new avenues for himself to kind of stuff that he probably would have never thought about. You know what I'm saying? Pre pandemic, you know, and that's a great thing about the, you know, not to say the pandemic was a great thing, but people being creative in the, in the pandemic allowed him to create something different, another different avenue of the yeah. stream of money for himself and playing a big part. And YouTube playing a big part of it, allowing him to come in, do live stream. Nobody was in the crowd. It was just being donations from the chat box and things like that. And he just had a good time. And that's how you take something small from the gram, just having fun, and you flip into a, 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 another stream of avenue for yourself. So. I think that's one of the ones that we're gonna look back on and be like, oh, that was the first of its kind. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, man. That was that was that was big, man. I didn't, I didn't think about that, man, because he was. Everybody was on there. Everybody wanted to see who was Tory Lanez who was gonna come on there next doing the uh, next thing. Like, uh, I think your boy Big Fendi had something like had that. Had Fendi, too. him and Boost. <laughs> that quarantine, 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 quarantine. He was killing with the quarantine yeah, radio. Man, he was killing, killing with the quarantine. Yeah. Where everybody want to be locked in. Yeah. Then I come back with my next one. I think this was the one that nobody really thought was going ever going to happen. We had the the Mike Tyson and the Roy Jones Jr. bout, Man. and the whole thing was crazy the way how he had it set up. You know what I'm saying? We never saw anything like that where they had to. You know, it was it wasn't conventional boxing like you know, cause boxing itself can kind of get a little stale to me personally. I'm not a mm -hmm. avid boxer fan. I like boxing. I'm a right. casual fan, like a lot of different people. But the way they did it, where you know they had Snoop Dogg being a commentator, yeah. out of Sonya who come from US, yeah, UFC yeah, to be yeah. a commentator, yeah. and then they had to. Well, you know what I'm saying? Different rappers performing in between the fights yeah. with something different that we've never seen before. Yeah. And Trilla kind of came with that and kind of like gave us a different uh, perspective on how uh, a boxing match can take place. Because normally you just see, you know, you see all the little the tune up fights. Yeah. And then you, you see the boxer, they kind of cut back between, between the boxers. And then yeah. they have the boxer come out with the music. And then that's kind of it. Yeah, you got people but, in the crowd. Yeah. Man, yeah, so yeah exactly. But this one was a whole different whole different um, avenue where you had Snoop Dogg. Where I think we need to start looking towards that in the future where take that, where have like normal people calling these fights, you know yeah, what I mean? Kind of make yeah. us more entertaining because Snoop Dogg took the, you know, he took the cake for me, bro, when he was like, you know, talking about, you know, different fights throughout the night yeah. and then talking about the fight with Jake Paul and then, you know, just talking about the Roy Jones. He's just giving yeah. us a different perspective when it, it comes. He kept it, he kept it funny, you know, he kept it light, you know, and he still, but he still hit you with some knowledge. He hit you with what was going on, hit you with some, uh, some facts about, you know, Tyson or, or, or Roy Jones, like you said, yeah, out of sign you. I mean, you know, the days of, uh, Get me wrong, I used to, I, used to, I like watching Larry Merchant, but those days, like, look, man, I don't want to hear Larry Merchant no more. Like you said, give me somebody, give me somebody Some fresh, fresh, man. You know what I'm saying? Somebody mm -hmm. that, that can basically just talk to us, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why I think that, that, that uh, what Snoop did, he talked to us. You know, it was just like we was in the barbershop, but we were just sitting in the room watching a fight. He just kind of yeah. talked instead of trying to get us that, that golden voice talk. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, that's okay at times, but we just know that they weren't throwing no haymakers and the guy was just, oh, Roy Jones and yeah. Tyson did yeah. this and Tyson. Yeah. Like, nah, yeah. man, that's cool. You just chill. Give us, give us what the play by play, you know, just let them know what's going on. And Snoop kind of did that for us. Yeah. And, he, and, he, and it wasn't like, it didn't sound like he was under any strict. Guy I was like, oh, you can't say this. You not nah. He was just being Snoop. Yeah. And I'm, I'm talking. I'm saying whatever come to my mind. 
they look like my uncles up there in their fight. Exactly, that's exactly. what everybody was thinking. Man. Exactly, and I think that what gives him the opportunity to do that because he was he's a part owner when it comes down. I think with Trilla, I think he's a part owner there. Okay, so that allowed him to kind of have a little free will to kind of talk. And, but that's always Snoop. Snoop gonna be Snoop regardless, no matter where he is. Yeah. And that's a good thing about it, you know. And I saw and I saw. I think they that, that fight did like over eighty million or something yeah, like yeah. that with the pay per view yeah. the pay per view buys. Yeah, that's crazy for a, for a boxing match of this kind like that. You know man, what I mean? Man, it, it just it just it just shows you the way how social media has changed the game. Because you got Mike Tyson, his social media, he, he's showing it, just getting everybody ready for the fight. You got Roy Jones doing his thing on his own social media platforms, just just hyping, hyping, the, hyping the whole, man, I mean, I can't lie, man, they kind of, you know, took a page from Mayweather, you know, it took, you know but yeah, man, that was, that was dope, man, I, I, I enjoyed it, even though, like you said, you know, uh, you know, you know, Tyson was going there. Tyson, yeah. you they weren't throwing no haymakers. They got what was a three minute round? What was a three, two minute round? Yep. It was seven rounds. Yeah. So they, you know, what I'm saying these guys up at age fifty, they up in yeah. their fifty. Boy, so he, you scared. Yeah, you know, Roy Jones trying to he he's swinging from the outside yeah, like he yeah. normally do. But you know, what I'm saying yeah. Tyson still got that. You know, Tyson yeah. still got that that knockout like he got that knockout power. Knockout, knockout. And so you know, the fight itself, you know, the whole it's like an event. That whole night of the event was good for me. I even like the the fights leading up to the main event fight. You know, they had some good fights. You know, we're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to that later. I know it's laughing. They're gonna get to that later. So you know. What I mean? I mean, did they have some good fights? Was it? <laughs> you know, we saw some good ones. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna last. Yeah. So you know, that, that was some. You know, just that night in, in this in this totality, man. That night was just good, man. Yeah. And it was yeah. good for for entertainment. And I think that's what we have to do with boxing, man. You know, boxing has to become more of an entertainment thing as well. And I think they could take a page from the, you know having the artists come out and do a little bit of show and things like that. So yeah. And then you know, I had one more. You know, this one. You know, you probably. I don't think he really dropped a lot of music, but. This guy, he has a crazy cult following, you know. Even his, his following is so strong that a lot of these different brands want to work with him, mm-hmm. and he's becoming a more of a mega star, and that's going to allow him to be able to last the test of time going outside of music. And I give this one to Travis Scott. You know, this this guy has some crazy partnerships, crazy partnerships, man. He had the PS, he had the Sony PS5 partnership man. that people went crazy for. Fortnite. He had the Fortnite joint, man. Cause my kids was going crazy, man. It was like, Dad, Travis Scott, we got to be up for the trap. I think it came on, it dropped. I want to say it dropped like when the pandemic first started. When the pandemic first started, you know, everybody, all the kids, because it was during the summertime. Yep. Kids wasn't at school. You know, I think he dropped his. I want to say midnight. Mm-hmm. I want to say the first, the first one he dropped. It might have been ten eleven. It didn't mean, but I know in my household and all their friends that was waiting, they waiting, was waiting for. It. And I ain't gonna lie. I was man when it dropped. I was sitting right there trying to see what he doing right behind his shoulder, looking like, "Ooh, that shit, that shit hard." You, you know, know what I'm saying? So he, he got yeah. some crazy partnership. He got yeah. the, he got the Fortnite joint. He had the punk. The, 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 I mean, say the, the Sony PlayStation Five joint. He did. You know, he had the videos leading up to that. And then he also had uh, the McDonald's joint where people were going crazy selling the shirts for six hundred dollars just straight from Travis McDonald's. Scott Burger. The Travis Scott Burger, you know what I'm saying? So he had a crazy partnership. And then he had the Nike joint that he already had. Oh, yeah. And he was kind of yeah. dropping the, the different the different Travis Scott joints with the Nike. So I just think he got a crazy cult following and then he just kinda like boom through the pandemic. Yeah. But not necessarily with the money with the music side, but more or less just with his partnership. But it's just how he used how he leveraged yeah. his music to be able to build with these different, you know, saying these different brands and partner his his likeness and things like that. And that's what you got to do, man. You got to be able to get that money outside of just the music because yeah. the music probably not bringing as much money as it used to be because you used to pay. When we was coming up, you paying, what, $17, $17 for, for a CD? You're going to see the show. You're going to see the shows. You know what I mean? Then, then, then the, uh, you got the, the merch yeah, and all man, that. that you know what I'm saying? Money. So now it's all streams. So you got to you know put up a million, couple, couple million streams to get your money back. Yeah. And then those, because you're getting you know, pennies on a dollar when it comes to the stream. Same so you got to be able to get your money some other way, which you yeah. can't do go out and do shows. So I think this is a way for him to kind of level up his money yep. with a different partnership. Yeah, yeah, that's good, man. Yeah, I like I like Travis. I mean, you know, Travis Scott is a good uh man. He's a good performer, man. Like you said, he leverages his, his, his stardom. You know what I mean? Cause like I said, man, I had he had the kids at the house, man. They was they was on it. Like, nah, I gotta get the Travis Scott skin or whatever. <laughs> and then the skin for the Fortnite. I'm like, what? what? You know, yeah. Uh, yeah, man, uh Travis Scott did his thing. Man. Nice, yeah, nice. I agree. I agree. All right, so we let's wrap up my my um pandemic hustler war i know it's a little bit different you know you guys probably haven't heard of this before we kind of got these topics so it's kind of thinking outside the box when it come down to pandemic who kind of made it through who kind of who leveled up and got their money up and got their brands up throughout this pandemic so we're gonna see my boy wallace who we got who we coming back with with this pandemic hustler award coming back coming back number one coming back to my guy spitter ah andre spitter man he gave us man off the top i want to say he gave us at least four at least four during the pandemic with Welcome to Jet Life, he, he dropped uh, uh, a 
collaboration with, with Fendi and a couple other uh, T.Y. a couple other cats. The Spitter kept dro- I want to say he dropped about four albums during this pandemic, man. And they all they all was cold. They all was cold. So, man, he always man always dropping out. I, I want to say Spitter dropped at least four man four five projects a year. So then him just with the pandemic dropping four and what we've been in what, yeah about eight months eight months. It was four. You know what I mean. I mean so. That's my that's my guy for uh, the pandemic award. But I, I have a, I have a second. One. Have a Talk second. to me. Talk to me, man. Uh, even though I really don't like dude like that because of stuff he 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 said outside. But I gotta give it to Dana White, man. Dana. Dana White. Man. UFC. UFC. Oh man. yeah, he put it on with the, with the Fight Island. Man, Fight Island, man. I mean, Fight Island. Man, we need we needed that. He, Bro, man, he went and got Dubai. Man, had it all set up. Man, we needed that. Man, he had all he had all the boys out there yep. fight. Man, he had all the big fights going on. Even during the pandemic, man. So everybody was talking about, man. I, I'm sitting back watching this UFC. Yep. People didn't even like the UFC. It was the only thing on. Only thing on was no sports, no hoop, no football, nothing. I mean, baseball wasn't even playing. Yep. I mean, he came. He came through. Had Adesanya out there fighting. All them cats out there fighting, man. And it was that was good fight. Yeah, that yeah, was dope. It was dope, bro. Like, cause we were, we was around here, we was, we on the chat screaming like, ain't, yeah. ain't nothing to watch. What we gonna do? You yeah. on the gram? You on social media? You gonna do that so much? Yeah. And then you know, what I'm saying we kind of took for granted with all these different sports we had going on. Yeah. And then for him to go over there and just set up a whole island with just like you know precautions for everybody to take the COVID test. Yeah. And this is before we even you know we was in the, in the midst of it. Like the, we didn't know what was gonna happen. Was was, we was in the midst of it, and he kind of like put their heads together and put a whole island together. And had all those great fights come out of it, and that's a real hustler war right yeah. there for sure. Because yeah. we were, we were dead in the water when we were, and when it came down to Nothing. sports, because they they were still talking about what we we're gonna do for the NBA. You know, baseball was in the middle. I mean, we didn't we didn't know what was gonna happen. So for him to kind of just come out the blue and be like, we're gonna put everybody on the island and just you know, what I'm saying go put on these matches and have you guys tune in. And, and and it was at a decent time where it didn't really fall off for us where we normally would be trying to watch something at like 2 in the morning or something like that. So yeah. it was still at like our normal time watching the yeah. show, watching the fights and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, yep. Still gave us one of the biggest fights of the year. Uh, out of Sonya, five, yep. Five, yep. Five, yep. Five, oh, know, man. You know, my boy. Putting that work in. Stop in the drop. You what, second round? Ooh, putting, putting that work in. in you man, know, putting but, that work in. Man, I, that, was, that was one of the biggest fights of the year during the pandemic. So that's, man, uh, Dana White, I mean, he did be running his mouth a lot. He yeah. talking a lot of red. But he putting it, but, you, but he backing it up with them fights though. Yeah. And that's the thing I like about USC. Where we, I know you, you're a big boxing fan, yeah. and yeah. I, I'm, I'm a casual boxer. I like boxing. You know, I like the big matches. I'm not gonna watch the, you know, the featherweight of some nobodies. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm gonna watch. The, I'm gonna watch the main event fights yeah. and stuff like that. But when it came to USC, I just felt like USC was just a little bit more of an entertainment thing, and they, they had that kind of locked down. They probably not bringing as much money as boxing, yeah. but that entertainment value was there. You know, what I mean? we're gonna get the best fights because you got it ran by one person. Whereas boxing is being ran by nobody, nobody. everybody's just kind of you. We got, yeah. the, you got this federation over here. Yeah. You got that federation over there. They doing what they want to do. Yeah. And when it came down to UFC, it came down to one person making a decision what was gonna happen, and that's where it kind of came back when he's like, "Hey, look, we're gonna go over here in Dubai. Man. We're gonna set up a whole island. We're gonna bring everybody together. And you guys yeah. gonna either fight or you're not gonna fight." Yep. He, he man, he brought it like you say. He brought it, and the energy was still there, man. Cause my guy, uh, uh, Bruce Buffer. <laughs> hey, do, like like a like a hundred thousand in the room, man. Like a hundred, hey, like a hundred thousand in the room. Ain't nobody in there. You were like, let's man, you jump up, let's go. Look, let's get it in. He's there. still coming, man. Bruce Buffer, come in. He do his thing. Let's get fighters, ready, man. Get the fighters going. The fighters go there. Pump when he be introducing them, man. Nobody in the arena, but hey, they out there fighting like it's a hundred thousand, hundred thousand in there, bro. Yeah, yeah. So. You know, that's our pandemic hustler war. Like I said, it's something a little bit different. We come out the box with these ideas, yep. some of these topics that you guys probably never heard of before. You know, that's what we do here at the Dope Vision. We're trying to create a whole experience for you guys. As you can see, this is Dope Vision experience. We outside, we in the bay, we're doing great things. Love it's your boy Frank Nitty. We're going to come back to you with another segment. Lock in with us, tap in with us. We'll see you in the next segment. It's your boy Frank Nitty. We out. Yep.